So I'm going to be showcasing some of the more advanced joints and I'm using a preloaded demo file just to show some of the ones that you may encounter. So unlike rigid joints, um, the other joints allow for motion between some of your components. So because of that, you're going to need to ground one of your parts just so that um, everything doesn't move when you try to rotate something. So if I go over to my base part here, I can right click it, hit ground, and if you do so correctly, your part should have a little pin icon right there. So with our rigid joints, we know that when we create one, it essentially removes all degrees of freedom, so there should be no motion between the two parts, as you can see here. Um, so one of the new joints that you may see is the revolute joint. So this basically allows for one rotation around the joint origin that you choose. So that's going to be around the X, Y, or Z axis. So if we go into the motion tab, you can actually select a revolute joint. And this will allow it to spin along that axis. Now if it's not spinning along the right one, you can go into this drop down and select a different axis. Obviously the X axis doesn't make a lot of sense. So you can go and select the one you need and it will correct itself accordingly. You can hit OK. So I'm going to do the same for this side. Um, and you'll notice that it actually doesn't, um, it's not facing the right direction. So what you can do to quickly fix that is just to hit flip down here and it will correct itself. And just hit OK. You'll see Revolute is already selected, so nothing needs to be changed there. Right. So instead of selecting a joint origin as we normally do, um, you can actually select between two faces. This way um, we can sort of align things to the center even when there isn't actually a uh, anything there to click. So we can select between here and here. And then all we have to do is select the snap piece. So just click the center here. You'll see that we now have a joint origin right there in the center, even though there's no um, parts for us to click there. And we can do the same for this um, base piece. We can click between this base and this base and then select the center. And that way it will align properly. And you'll see we also set this to a revolute joint, but when we animate it, it actually goes through the other piece. And that's not very realistic, so what we can do is we can set joint limits. So in order to set a joint limit, you just have to go into the joint folder over here. Select the joint we just created, so revolute 4. If you right click that and hit edit joint limits, you will get this menu over here. And so what you can do is you can set a minimum and a maximum. So if we check the minimum, we can set that to negative 90 degrees and set the maximum to 90. Uh, you can animate it just to check that it's working properly. So you'll see that now it actually doesn't go through. And when you rotate that within your file, you'll see that it's limited to all the parameters that we just set. So finally, I'm going to be showing you um, the cylindrical joint, which um, is applicable for like a relationship between a knot and a bolt, for example. So here we can just create a joint between these two. And if we go into the motion tab, you'll see it's currently set to revolute. Um, Obviously, the nut just spinning is kind of useless, so what we can do is we can set it to cylindrical. This allows it to translate and rotate along the same axis, so you'll see it's more um, applicable to this case. Um, however, again, we're seeing that it sort of goes out of bounds for what we want, so again, we can go into the joints folder here, cylindrical 5, hit edit joint limits, and for this case, we actually have two different motions that were allowed for this, so we don't really want to change the rotation. So what we want to do is go into slide, and from there we can set the minimums and maximums. So minimum, we can set that to 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0
maximum could be 0.5. And when we animate that, you'll see that it's sort of, it only shows the slide motion, but um, once you hit OK, it'll actually combine both the rotation and the slide. Hit OK. Ground this specifically. So you can see that now when we move this part, it's able to rotate and slide up and down like regular nut and bolt. So some of the other joints you may encounter though are the slider, which allows it to just translate along a single axis. So the revolute and the slider are actually the combination that create the cylindrical joint. Um, another joint we have is the pin slot joint. So this is slightly different from the cylindrical joint because it allows for the translation to occur on a different axis than the rotation. We also have the planar joint, so it just allows it to move along a plane while rotating along one axis. And then finally, the ball joint, which is a rotation around all three axes, axes using a gimbal system, so that obviously has three rotations.